Good morning. It's a big change, wouldn't you say? And look at the pond. It's not uh, glassy smooth like last night, huh? So this is a, uh, this was, uh, like I mentioned, it's a little fishing area that's owned by the state of Montana. You can camp here for um, up to seven days. And there's a few camp spots right around the water. And then the uh, there's a little loop around road. So in total, I think there's about uh, maybe seven spots here. But uh, nice little spot. I have a feeling we're going <clears> to <throat> run into some rain earlier. Look, this is a nice little path all around the lake. And let's get a better shot here. So all in all, not a bad spot. Somebody out here yesterday had a fire. So I think uh, first hour or so, there's um, gonna just have to do paved roads. <laughs> just have to do paved roads. Uh, roughly paralleling the um, Yellowstone River. And then, depending upon what the weather's doing, might be able to uh, cut up northwest onto some dirt, head out towards um, Roundup, Montana. And then if it starts raining before that, might just have to stay on the paved road and then uh, maybe go um, down towards Billings, Billings instead. So I'll play it by ear today. See what happens. That's the fun part of it, right? Okay. Oh wait, one more thing I wanted to show you is remember how uh, on the uh, walk across America last time I told you I was observing what the favorite beer was in the different areas and uh, bush light seemed to be the winner? Well, it's the uh, winner here as well. But these knuckleheads left uh, it in there, so I'm going to crush them down and take them with me to throw them away somewhere. But come on, knuckleheads. Whenever you go to places like this, take your trash with you. Don't be a, don't be a knucklehead. All right, that's my uh, preaching for today. Now let's go. <laughs> Howdy, you need a ride into town? You heading my way? You going the other way? Don't know? All right, well, see you around. Guess you're not going into town.
started. Take a look. So now I'm wondering, I decided today to do an extra 60 miles um, or so. But now with all this, I don't want to put ruts into a uh, Forest Service Road, so I might either just hang out at a uh, rest area tonight, or I might even go another 120 miles or so to Helena and get a hotel room. <laughs> it's going to be 40-something tonight and rainy. Uh, uh, we'll see. Good morning. It rained all night here in a little place called Harloton, Harloton, Montana. Stayed at the uh, rest stop. It was quiet. So now it's raining all day today. So I think that just means a, um, a lazy day in the rain on the pavement. And um, go to Helena, go to Butte. I don't know, we'll flip a coin and see where the road takes us, right? Hmm. All right, let's get a move on. And off we go. US 12 is going to be our friend for a uh, good part of the day. Gotta make a decision up here. Do I turn left, go to Butte, or do I turn right and go to Helena? So, what decision did I make? <laughs> I made the decision to turn right, I'm going to Helena because. Well, I think that's the state capital, right? And then also, I just crossed over the Missouri River. And, uh, I guess, just Helena was calling me. Well, as you can tell, it's a new day. <laughs> I, uh, as you saw, I turned right and went in uh, towards Helena. Well, I actually ended up staying in Helena for two nights got myself a hotel room and just slept. So, uh, slept through the rain and didn't do anything really at all. So I stopped here along uh, Highway 55 for a second. Uh, I wanted to show you something. This is the Johnson Valley. And Lewis and Clark came up this way from um, north up there. They Then they coming down this way here. They uh, were following a Jefferson River which uh, basically follows this line here. And then they got to the uh, Jefferson River with the confluence of the Big Hole River. And uh, Lewis was ahead. He had done some scouting ahead with three men. And he left, a, he left a note on a pole 
at the confluence of the two rivers. And he told Clark, who was a day or so behind him, to keep following the Jefferson River and don't go up the big hole. Well, <laughs> so uh, Lewis took off, uh, continued going south, uh, but uh, <laughs> a beaver got the pole and took the pole along with the note. And so Clark, he didn't see it. So when he got to the confluence there, he, he went up the big hole uh, river and uh, quickly found out that that wasn't the place to go because he had found one of um, Lewis's guys scouting up there. So they came back down and with a little bit of uh, trouble and uh, getting some of their stuff wet, they actually had to camp right here in this spot for a couple days to dry everything out. Good thing these cars weren't going by when they were here. <laughs> and they're, the reason they were heading this way is because they're following old Indian road. Uh, they're trying to um, get up and make contact with the Shoshone so that they could get um, some fresh horses to continue uh, their exploration of the headwaters of the Missouri River and then hopefully find a passage to the um, Pacific. Quite an ordeal. Yes, it was. All right, let's go. I made a stop here before we go over the pass because I want to show you. Uh, well, I'm going to show you the pass. <laughs> now there's Lemmy Pass out that way, but I want to show you this over here. <clears throat> this is the valley that Lewis and Clark followed on their uh, journey up. They uh, followed basically the um, that side of the valley right there and uh, came up. And then went up and over the pass over that way. Uh, what's interesting about this is a couple of, a uh, few different things. So this valley right here pretty much represents the end of the range of the bison. Because once you get up into the um, Continental Divide here, which this is actually going to be the Continental Divide that we go over, no more bison to the west. And it, uh, right, off, right after the divide, it just became a few elk and antelope. But anyway, um, so up until this point, Lewis and Clark had pretty much uh, abundant uh, food sources, right? Coming up the Missouri all that way uh, with the, the fishing and all the bison and everything like that. So the, uh, the Indians that, they were, uh, that were guiding them through this area, the Shoshone, they told Lewis and Clark, hey, look. No more bison after here. And like I just told you, maybe a few elk and, and uh, antelope after that. But for the most part, after you get over the Continental Divide, it's just going to be subsisting on some roots until you get down to the uh, Snake River where you can uh, then get some fish. So um, their diet was uh, going to be changing as soon as they get past the Continental Divide here. Then the other thing too, as you know, uh, Part of the expedition was not only just mapping out the Louisiana Purchase, but was also trying to uh, map out a, a path to the Pacific Ocean. The Indians were telling them, hey, once you get over this Continental Divide here and you get down to the Snake River, that Snake River is not going to be navigable to the Pacific. So um, this is basically going to be the last of the quote-unquote <laughs> easy part of the journey for Lewis and Clark to get to the Pacific. Once they got down to the Snake River, 
and turn north, then they had to wind their way through valleys and mountains until they got to the Columbia River because navigating the Snake River wasn't just wasn't going to be feasible. So once we get up and over um, the pass here, we'll get down to Snake River. I'll show you that. But then uh, Lewis and Clark and our journey is going to split ways because I'm turning south, they turn north. But um, anyway, this is a in little interesting part of history. And you know something? Hmm. I'm wondering if this is a future trip. Following the Missouri River all the way that Lewis and Clark did all the way up to the Pacific. That even sounds like a nice hike. Hmm. <laughs> all right, let's go see Lemmy Pass. You know, the other interesting thing about traveling this route right now is that this is almost the same exact time of year that Lewis and Clark came through here. We're maybe coming through here about three weeks later than when they came. Coming through here and get it getting narrower and narrower, you can... Um, Think about what they were thinking, huh? Wondering if, oh, are we gonna make it? <laughs> and then it opens up here again, and they're going, oh, okay, not so bad. Well, and here we are, at the top of uh, Lemmy Pass. You know, by the way, Lemmy Pass was the name given to this afterwards, uh, probably about 50 years after Lewis and Clark came. It was actually named by Mormon settlers that came through here. But anyway, uh, this is Lemmy Pass, 7,373 feet above sea level. The highest point on Lewis and Clark's um, journey of... That time passed. There's to the east of Montana, west and Idaho. Actually, the line's going to be right Hi there. Got a little visitor too while we're at it. Uh, the state line is actually right here. So now we're in Montana. Now we're in Idaho. <laughs> and there goes our friend going into Montana. So uh, again, Lewis and Clark came up from uh, this way here, looking like I, like I told you for the famed Northwest Passage that could get them out to the Pacific Ocean. When we, and this drops them down to the Salmon River. And as you know, the Salmon River, um, didn't get them there. They had to end up still traveling by foot up to the Clearwater River and then turning west and finally making it to the Columbia and out to the Pacific. And what also made uh, this part of the uh, journey coming up the pass somewhat simple, uh, besides having the uh, Shoshone um, guiding them through, they also had uh, a well-worn footpath and horse path that was already here from the years and years and years of the Indians walking and riding their horses up and over um, from uh, Horse Prairie Valley down into the uh, Salmon River Valley. So uh, that was uh, something that made it quite simple too. And then, you know, Lewis and Clark's, the Indian Trail became Lewis and Clark's Trail, then became a road where the gold seekers and the westward bound seekers were would eventually follow and then uh, stagecoach road and then eventually there was a uh, <laughs> there's a uh, what was it called I think it was called Gilbert and Pittsburgh Railroad uh, that came up this way and the Gilbert and Pittsburgh Railroad by the way was also named the get out and push <laughs> um, and then uh, it became forest uh, roads and then today right here it's also the Continental Divide Trail. So 
So how many people have uh, walked up here on the Continental Divide Trail from Mexico up to the Canadian border? Not as many that perhaps do it on the uh, Pacific Crest Trail every year, but still a few nonetheless. So uh, we're going to head on down west now into Idaho, down to the Snake River. And uh, like I said, Joseph Clark and I and us are going to go our separate ways. They're going to turn north and we're eventually going to turn south. And then tomorrow probably we're going to head up to the, the highest road in Idaho. It has nothing to do with Lucy Clark. See anyway, right? Nice, right? I guess if uh, somebody was sitting here in the passenger seat, it would be a little bit of a pucker factor, right? Don't you think? Mm -hmm.